Some of the economists who six months ago predicted big falls in property prices are now changing their positions. Firstly, because the collapse in property prices that they forecast hasn't happened. And secondly, because the forward indicators suggest there is growth ahead. Westpac was one of those who suggested back in March that we would see significant decline in prices, but is now pre predicting very moderate decrease from peak to trough. And it's also now forecasting big price increases in our major cities in the next few years. For example, Brisbane house prices are expected to rise 20% over two years after the market bottoms out in mid-2021, that's according to Westpac, while Sydney prices could climb 14%. Melbourne prices are predicted to lift by 12%, Perth by 18%, and Adelaide by 10% in the two years after mid-2021. Nationally, house prices are expected to rise an average of 15% over the same period, almost double the 8% the bank forecast as recently as April. Economists Bill Evans and Matthew Hassan say of most importance is that we are much more optimistic about the price, the pace of price increases over the following two years. Westpac's upbeat forecast follows the Commonwealth Bank's prediction for a rebound in prices from next year in view, a view which is also rosier than a CBO's previous expectations. There are a couple of things worth noting about that. One is the frequency with which bank economists change their forecast. And you have to ask whether their predictions have any value when they are likely to change them two or three months later, which is what we've just seen from both Westpac and the Commonwealth Bank on property prices. My other comment is that I think they're both wrong and their assumptions that prices in our major cities will fall between now and the middle of 2021. Prices have actually been remarkably steady up to this point and I think we will see significant increases much sooner than the banks are predicting. In some city markets and in many regional markets, prices are rising right now. And more evidence that prices are doing well right now has come from this week's price index from SQM Research. It indicates that there have been price rises for house markets in the past month in Sydney, in Melbourne, in Brisbane, in Darwin, and in Hobart. The capital city average for the past month, according to SQM Research, is a 0.7% increase for houses. There have also been price rises for apartments, according to these figures, in Melbourne, Perth, Adelaide, Canberra, and Hobart. In annual terms, house prices remain higher than a year ago in all capital cities except Darwin and Canberra. Nationally, house prices are 4.2% higher than they were a year ago. And once again, this shows that the forecast six months ago of a major collapse in our prices have been shown to be very wide of the mark. Now, another sign of strength in real estate markets comes from the latest data published this week on auction clearance rates. The combined capital city auction clearance rates for the past week was 72%, the highest recorded since early March. By comparison, the previous week recorded a clearance rate of 67%, and this time last year, a clearance rate of 71% was recorded across the combined capital cities. The clearance rates for some of the individual cities over the past week include 72% for Sydney, 89% for Canberra, and 69% in Adelaide. Melbourne had only 11 properties put to auction in the past week, given the current restrictions in that city, so no meaningful clearance rate was recorded for Melbourne. Now, the federal government's home builder stimulus package has helped bolster land sales over the past quarter and will keep the building industry active for the next 12 months and beyond. That's according to the Housing Industry Association. The latest HIA report on sales of new homes shows the uptake of land in the three months to August was 61% higher than the previous quarter when confidence in the market was low due to the coronavirus lockdowns. HIA Chief Economist Tim Reardon says the significant improvement shows that the scheme, which was off, uh, introduced in June, offering a 25% grant incentive to build a new home has achieved what was intended. And Reardon says the new home sales data confirms that Home Builder will support building activity and protect jobs in the December quarter. The monthly survey of Australia's largest home builders in the five biggest states shows that the rise in sales was fairly widespread across the nation. But additional cash injections for first home buyers 
saw sales in Western Australia increase 175% over the three months to August. Now, banks are seeking to attract new customers and are throwing cash at homeowners in an attempt to lure them into refinancing their mortgage with them. A number of financial lenders are offering thousands of dollars through cashback incentives to win over customers looking for a better deal on their home loan. A flurry of refinancing activity has incurred in the past six months as existing borrowers seek to capitalise on cheap interest rates. According to the ABS, 113,000 people <coughs> have changed lenders through refinancing in the four months to July. Rate City Research Director Sally Tyndall says banks are targeting refinances as they are often perceived as a more stable borrower. 22 lenders across Australia are advertising cashback deals of up to $4,000 for both new loans and for refinancing loans. Tyndall says an ongoing low interest rate is a better deal in the long run than an upfront cash incentives, but she does note that some banks are offering both. They're offering cash deals and also a competitive interest rate. Now, <clears throat> looking at the unemployment data that came out recently, Treasurer Josh Frydenberg has called for greater flexibility in the labour market to drive the jobs recovery with 458,000 people going back to work in the past three months, cutting the jobless rate to 6.8% despite what's happening in Victoria. The economy created 111,000 new jobs in August, boosting the number of employed people to 12.6 million, although that's still a little short of the 13 million employed before the onset of the pandemic. The Labor Force report counted economists' expectations of a loss of 35,000 jobs and a rise in the unemployment rate from 7.5% to 7.7%. And that is another set of numbers which show just how bad economists are at forecasting pretty much everything. Consumer confidence is continuing to improve. Sentiment has lifted in four of the past five weeks, according to a major survey. Importantly, Households are showing increased appetite for making a major household purchase. The ANZ Roy Morgan sub-index measure of whether it's a good time to buy a major household item rose 5.3% last week to reach the highest level since June. Stay-at-home Aussies have shown a strong desire to upgrade their homes during the pandemic. Commonwealth Bank credit and debit card spending figures show that household furnishings and equipment in September was up. 28% on the same time a year ago. <clears throat> now, to finish, I'd like to focus on vacancy rates and rents. Most of our capital cities have very low vacancy rates, but they remain relatively high still in Sydney and Melbourne. And this has caused rents to fall in those two biggest cities and also to drag down the average situation for capital cities overall. According to SQM research figures out this week, the capital city average for rents is a fall of 3% in house rents over the past 12 months and a 5.5% fall in apartment rents. And this is despite, despite the fact that rents have risen in annual terms in Perth, Adelaide, Canberra, Darwin and Hobart. Perth rents have risen 6.2% for houses and 6% for apartments, figures which provide further evidence of the recovery in property markets in the WA capital. But the best performance on rents is occurring in regional Australia. The average situation for the capital cities, as I said, is a decline in rents for both houses and apartments, with that average being pulled down by the situation in Sydney and Melbourne. But nationally, rents are up 5.4% for houses and around 1% for apartments. And this tells us that rents are rising, generally speaking, in regional Australia. And that's no surprise because vacancies are ultra low in many regional cities and towns across Australia. In many regional centres, vacancy rates are the lowest ever recorded. Vacancy rates below 1% are common. <clears throat> it's all part of the biggest trend currently <clears throat> excuse me, impacting real estate, the trend I call the exodus to affordable lifestyle. Bye for now.